Okay, where are we going this morning? Hey, we are going to Just Catamarans this morning to talk about boat refits that we want to have done. So we're kind of excited about it, and I think we might be pretty excited just that we have a rental car. So we feel a little free today. Woohoo! All right, let's go. <laughs> All right. With boat refits right around the corner, it was time to take a trip to Fort Lauderdale where we would meet with the service department at Just Catamarans. Although we took all the usual precautionary measures before purchasing the boat, the survey proved to not be as comprehensive as we had hoped. Our engines had failed, most of our navigation equipment was not working, and our sails were old and deteriorating. As we headed up the Keys to mainland Florida, we tried to sort out our wants from our needs. Unfortunately, most everything seemed to fall into the need category, and very little fell into the want column. We couldn't afford it all, so we knew some tough decisions were in our future. When we arrived at Just Catamarans, our broker, Larry Schaefer, introduced us to Raphael Escobar, or Raf as we came to know him, who would oversee our refits while we were at the boatyard. During our nearly three hour discussion, we prioritized our needs into three separate areas. Navigation, systems, and rigging and sails. Numerous repairs fell under those headings, so sorting it all out was a challenge. Deciding what we could afford was a whole other issue, but we knew we needed to make three big purchases, the first being lithium batteries. Three of these batteries would output a total of 900 amp hours and would provide plenty of power to all of our systems. Next, a chart plotter and radar. At the heart of our navigation hub would be a Garmin 942 combined with their 18-inch HD radar system. And finally, a water maker. Making our own water is a must, so we went with a Ventura 200T from Spectra, which will enable us to make more than eight gallons of water an hour. So we are just leaving ca just catamarans, and we spent hours there this morning. And first of all, if you are even thinking about buying a catamaran, that is the place to go. They are so helpful, and they never once made us feel rushed, and they answered every one of our silly questions and um, they just are really super patient with us because we really don't know anything. So um, I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed because there are quite a few repairs and refits that we need to have done um, and of course I want to do them all but I know we're not going to be able to do them all because we can't afford to do them all so um, I'm just in that space of um, having to prioritize, I guess, like what what things we're going to do to the boat and what things we're not. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. How about you? There were some things that were certainly a shock, how much it cost. Like we weren't even in the ballpark or the Milky Way with what I thought they would cost. So in some ways it made the decision easier because we just can't afford it. And then there are other things that I think we just need to prioritize safety over convenience and you know really what's going to help us live out on the water um, because we won't have access to things in, you know on some of these islands that we would here for example water I mean we've got to have water. And if we're always having to try to find water to fill jerry cans with and take it out to the boat, I don't think we're going to enjoy our experience as much as if we can just make our own water. So, But that's a big dollar item. Um, but that might be one of those big dollar items that we just got to bite the bullet and do and sacrifice in other areas. So, I don't know. Yeah, a bit overwhelming, but not because... It's just overwhelming because of our ignorance at this point. We didn't know what to expect. Now we got educated and we move forward. So.
we move forward. Since we had a car, we took the opportunity to head to Vero Beach to visit two young tennis professionals that we had the good fortune of meeting during my tenure as a tennis coach. Joseph and James Van Dynes had just opened up their very own 15-quart facility, and the girls were fortunate enough to get a quick lesson in during our visit. The Van Dynes brothers are USPTA certified elite level teaching professionals, with James recently winning an automatic bid into a USTA Futures event that will include players from multiple Davis Cup teams. Now, athletic talent runs deep in the Van Dynes family. Their sisters run a gymnastics center in Traverse City, and their program produced a national champion in 2016. But even with all their success at such a young age, I never met two people more humble and encouraging than James and Joseph. So when they agreed to a short interview, I was anxious to ask that with all of their success, how they managed to stay so grounded. Being in a competitive family, um you learn a lot of really good lessons, <laughs> I'll tell you that. You, not only do you learn a lot of really good lessons about competition, about winning and losing, but um, it really strengthens you. Um, I'm talking about on the inside. I mean, you really have to get mental fortitude, you know, learn things like that, and um, learn how to deal with problems that go beyond any kind of sports. That you have, and that's what's so great about sports in general is that anything you learn, you're gonna take it to any kind of situation in life, whether it's your job, your career, um, you know, faith. relationships, <laughs> faith. Faith is a fight, and, and we had to learn how to fight when we were on the tennis court, so, yeah. and the girls in their gymnastics. Working with family in any business can be challenging, but clearly the Van Dynes brothers had overcome the typical pitfalls. In fact, family seemed to be the main ingredient for their success. Joseph has always been a good example for people. When, whenever we're teaching kids, I always see him leading the pack, just like he leads me and just like he's able to teach me. He's always the guy that starts the trend. He's always the guy that leads the way. And people are able to follow him. And I see that in him, in that being that role model that he is, that is what I endeavor to do, whether that be teaching a kid or teaching an adult. I want to be a role model in my own faith, just like he's been a role model, just not just for other people, but for me as well. Um, he may be sound really good, but I'm definitely a lot more up and down emotionally. Um, James is just steady Eddie. I mean, he's even keeled, not a lot, upsets him, um, and he can get excited too, but he's just, he just, it's really hard to kind of upset James and frustrate James, and he just stays on point the entire time and I know I feel I don't feel that way at all I feel like I, I can get mad kind of easy or um, or get happy right away or just be up and down and James really brings a lot of stability to me in that and he can whether it's playing a tennis match with each other you know or playing a doubles match and I'm, I'm mad and he's got to calm me down or just other things if I'm upset because something didn't go right in one of the tennis lessons that I was teaching today or something went wrong you know at the club here or what whatever it may be James is definitely there to um, act as that baseline for me he really just calms me down evens and evens me out too having been hitting partners with some of the top pros in the world the Van Dynes brothers clearly had the talent to pursue a career on the court, so I was curious to know why they chose coaching over a professional playing career. There you go. We've been called to coach for sure. We, we love coaching, we love teaching, we're passionate about it, um, and it's so fun. I mean, it's really fun for us to, you know, see a kid or an adult learn, um, you know, a shot they've been working on and then see it successful in their matches. We, from in Michigan when we started our tennis program, we had exactly three kids in one tennis class when we started 16 years ago. And that grew to 150 kids as of last year. And we graduated three players that have gone on to play college tennis. And each of those three players started with us and our dad um, coaching from us um, when, when they were five, six yep. years old. So it's crazy to think that we have actually taught someone when they were five or six. All the way through college. All the way through college. Yep. And we're just recently out of college ourselves. So it's just, it's really cool. It's really fun to, um, you know, have that perspective and 
we definitely know what we've been called to coach and teach, and now we feel like it's kind of, we have another area to improve in, which is our tennis game. Having been around the coaching community for quite some time, I would never heard someone say that they were called to coach. So I asked them if they'd be willing to explain why they use that phrase and exactly what it meant. We're very open about our faith, I and mean, we don't make any bones about it. Um, but, so people ask us often, well, are you gonna go into ministry? And we often say, we're in ministry. We, we feel like we're in ministry right now. You could, we can be a tennis coach or a tennis pro and be in ministry. You could, you could be in ministry mopping floors. You can be in ministry doing anything. Um, you know, we, we trust God with everything that we do. And I think, uh, like Joseph said, we, we make no bones about it. You know, we're really open about, about our faith and about the fact that we serve Christ. And uh, I think people see that readily from us, whether we say it or not. <laughs> right. I, I think Because of the way we live our lives, um, you know, shining as lights. Um, in exactly. The that's, that's what we feel that, that we're influential, especially for young kids. I think um, very often that we can set an example for them and they see that light shining through us um, because of the way we live our lives and because of the fact that we're encouraging and uplifting and it's it's not just about making good tennis players for us, that's part of it, but it's right. about making good people yeah. and getting people to see this is how we live our lives and, and it brings glory to God and it, it hopefully sparks a passion in them to do the same. You, you, you don't always start off a tennis lesson as, hi, my name is Joseph, I'm a Christian, do you want to get born again or something like that? You're not. You're not always doing something like that. It's it's way more of just, you know, you're just you're just doing your doing your thing, and it's more like a light that shines through than anything else. It doesn't need to be so. Um, uh, it's like the phrase more. preach preach always, but use words when necessary. Yeah, that's that's, that's really how we feel. We live our lives. It's yeah, our our lives are a living epistle. Having extended our stay beyond what we originally promised, I pressed my luck and asked if they had a trick shot up their sleeve. And it didn't take but a few tries before James nailed a small plastic bottle on a serve. time on Sailing Starlike. One of Autumn's good friends from back home makes a surprise visit for a week. And then we turn the camera over to these two teenagers for a first-hand account of what it's like to be a teen living on a boat.